This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 31 of the Dressage Radio Show on the Horse Radio Network. Exclusive coverage of the world of dressage. We would like to thank our sponsors, Kentucky Performance Products. They can be found at kppusa.com. This is Glenn the Geek from Lexington, Kentucky. And this is Helena B. in Boston. And I'm Chris Stafford from Lexington, Kentucky. And I'm Samantha Clark from Lexington, Kentucky. And you are listening to the Horse Radio Network. Well, hello, everybody. Hi. I don't know. Have we ever done this before? Where we're all on uh, yes. remotely at the same yes. time? Not yes. remotely. <laughs> well, not remotely. We did it. Don't you remember? We did it after, after Rolex. Rolex, we were to all decompress. together. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I want to introduce everybody in case we have a lot of listeners. This is a special episode that we're doing for the holidays. And we have all of the full-time uh, co-hosts on here. And what we wanted to do was put this out on all of the different shows, one that gives uh, all of us a break next week. Uh, we're recording this a little early. And we want to wish everybody a happy holidays. We had a little Christmas music lead us in there. And I want to introduce everybody. We have we have Helena, my first co-host on the Stable Scoop show up there from Boston, Massachusetts in New England in the United States. Hi, Helena. Hello, everybody. And we have Chris from not what, by three miles from me here in Lexington, <laughs> Kentucky, who does the eventing and the dressage radio shows. Hi, Chris. Hi, everybody. And we have Samantha, the the last co-host to round out the group, doing the 2010 radio show from Lexington, Kentucky. Hi, Samantha. Hello. It seems like I spoke to all of you just yesterday, and I think we did record some shows yesterday and had a lot of fun. Well, I, w- I did want to introduce everybody because there'll be some listeners who haven't heard the other shows. We encourage everyone to listen to more than one show. They're all they're all good, and you know you you, you learn something on every show you listen to. And I wanted to thank uh, all of my hosts, uh, co-hosts for 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 a great year. We. Our listenership at the end of this year uh, is seven times what it was at the beginning of the year. And that does not include having the horse.com on board, which brings a whole new group of listenership that I haven't received the numbers on yet. So it's just been a fantastic year. And I, I just want to recap all of the shows a little bit. I'll start with you, Helena, because we were the first show, the Stable Scoop radio show. Mm-hmm. We've just we've gotten to talk to some fascinating people this year. Yeah, we have. It, it, it's <laughs> a been, lot of them. It's just been it, it's just been so neat the different people that we've gotten to talk to and the different topics we've gotten to talk about. And of course, that show covers a wide variety of of topics. And you know, is there a highlight for you for the year? Um, you know, the Twitter episode was fun because we got to involve, it was almost like having the listeners come in um, on that when we had four minutes for every guest. And we had 10 of them on that one show. I know. <laughs> and that was, it, it was fast and furious, but um, it was nice to hear from real people. So I think that one was one of my favorites. Um, I loved talking to Gina Miles earlier in the year. She was one of our first big name guests and it was like talking to a rock star as far as I was concerned. It's like, oh my God, I'm talking to Gina Miles. Don't mess it up. I had this little thing going across my screen. Don't mess it up. Well, you know, one of my favorites, of course, was the Horse Husbands episode, which is still one of the most popular episodes. Uh, and that was a lot of fun. I mean, we did have we did some different ones, and of course, uh, you know, Horse Love One Hundred and One, and and all those fun ones we did along the way. Yeah. So we had some great times there. Well, Chris, uh, you know, you you do two different shows, and we, I don't know. It's going to be hard to pick what 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 were highlights for this year from the shows. It is hard to pick because we had such a wide variety of guests on both um, the dressage and the eventing radio show. Um, I, I think probably my highlights from the eventing radio show would be the quizzes, the grooms quizzes. Oh, yeah. uh, we've talked to a lot of people and, you know, I've been blessed to have been in the sport for so long that uh, many of these people I know. And uh, But yet we got a different angle on it, you know, uh, with, for example, the couple series as well. 
and you know being able to use this vehicle this uh, medium in a way that hasn't been used before that's what's been so much fun i think for both the sports and in dressage i'd have to say all of them have been interesting because i've had a great uh, selection of co-hosts as you know we started off with uh, heather blitz and then uh, Debbie McDonald and Lisa Wilcox, of course, Reese Koffler joined us for a couple of episodes. And then th- the conversations that I've had with the riders that have been co-hosting the shows with me, um, they've been coming on as guests, as you know, Glenn Revery, uh, other week, um, both on dressage and eventing recently. And and that's a new dimension to the conversations. And it's been, it's, that's been a lot of fun doing that, especially with dressage where we'll talk about a whole range of topics which uh, as you know I'm really passionate about and in the in the sport so th- th- you know that's great and and unfortunately I've known these co-hosts for a while I've worked with them in the past so we have a good kind of synergy going on and and we do hear back from our listeners how much they enjoy that aspect well, of it so. and I think it that you're right, absolutely right one of the things that I have liked that has grown throughout the year on both shows is by having the new coast, by having me bail out of uh, eventing and, uh, and allowing some real eventers to get on there. Um, it really, your conversations about topics and subjects and training methods and everything has gotten much deeper uh, throughout the year. You, we've got, you've gone much deeper into those topics and conversations. And I think that's really what's appealing to people. It, it is. It seems to be an added value. Um, you know, I think it's one thing to to do those interviews to find out about people and, you know, what they have for breakfast. And you remember Ginny, Elli- Ginny Elliott uh, on, on one of the eventing radio shows said, um, uh, what was it? Um, Listen to what you had for breakfast or something. Yes, right. Right. You know, something <laughs> like that. <laughs> you know, that will inform, you know, how you're going to ride cross country, you know, if you've, uh, if you've got nerves or not. Um, I think, you know, the those sort of touchy-feely uh, conversations are always interesting to the general public who don't get to hear from the top riders. But there's also an enormous appetite for education, for tips, for to know how these top riders do things because they all do things differently. And there seems to be an insatiable appetite for that, which hopefully we'll be, we're able to deliver. And I'm enjoying being part of that conversation with them and, and being able to deliver that to an audience obviously is interested in so many different aspects of the sports. And, you know, we have listeners now, uh, for, if you combine all the shows in over 37 countries, you know, there are people listening. Uh, India is one of our fastest growing countries over the last couple of months. And who would have thought? But we thank all our Indian listeners. We appreciate that. Um, you know, we love to hear from our listeners from around the world, too. We'd, we'd love to hear that. And then there's Samantha. Samantha, you've been having more fun doing the 2010 radio show and the WAG show than, than I could have imagined you're, you would have. And me too. And I, I do. I look forward to, to taping it every week. And I thank you for that, Glenn. I've, I've been loving it. And I think uh, I would say that our spotlight riders, I never imagined that we would have so much fun and that they feel like a second family to me. Well, and they, they treat us that way, too. They love coming on the show, and they're all excited when we call. And if we don't call in a certain amount of time, we get emails from them saying, why haven't you called me lately? Uh, so <laughs> it, it's been fun. And, you know, we we just started that sort of on a whim as something to do, and all of them are doing pretty well. It looks they're like, doing really well. I, I was know. worried that it might be the kiss of death once we started following them and that they might <laughs> crash and burn. But so far, touch wood, they're doing really, really well, and I couldn't be prouder of them. And I love keeping up with them and emailing them. And we've... That we've found out personal things with them, we've become attached to them, and then I'm and I'm thrilled. I couldn't be couldn't be happier. And then we've also had chatting with the champions, which you know it's a whole other level, which has been very exciting. And and like Chris said, finding out um, little sort of quirks and things about the you know higher level riders that you wouldn't necessarily know, and that's that's been that's been exciting. One of the things we're going to be doing on that show that uh, is kind of exciting starting in January is two of the recordings every month that we do are going to be on locations we would like people to visit or where that we recommend they visit when they come to the games. So we're going to be going out to our favorite restaurants. So we're going to be going out to tourist places. We're going to be one of the first stops we're making is the Woodford Reserve uh, distillery. This is just an excuse what a for surprise. you guys. <laughs> you <know? laughs> And we also have We're a looking lot of for fun. free food and drink on the road. Yes. Yes, we are, <laughs> <is> Chris. <laughs> and I think I enjoyed the test events where um, they 
were fun too. And we have the big test events coming up at Rolex. So that'll be a big week for all of us. Yeah, we'll be uh, listening to everybody's help for that one. Uh, you know, I have to thank you guys. You have been absolutely wonderful. You certainly don't do it for the money. Uh, none of us at this point do it for the money. Hopefully someday we'll be doing it for the money. But, you know, at least that'll be a, a, a something as a bonus because we do this because we love it. Chris, when you called me, you know, all those what seems like a long time. It is a long time ago now. Um, it's last winter, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, and you said, let's do this eventing show and let's just make it a Rolex show and then we'll quit and and – you know, here we are, what, uh, a, a year or over a year later of doing the eventing show, and now you're about to do Rolex again. <laughs> so it's, uh... Well, we are, and that, of course, that will be a kind of combined event. And I want to just, when you mentioned the location shoots, you know, we've had one or two opportunities to do that. Of course, I was at the USEA convention, and I think being out there in front of people makes it, makes us real um, for a lot of people that are listening and uh, I was also at an event last weekend where people were coming up and, and saying hello and they they're now beginning to identify with us as uh, you know you know it, it's something that they relate to every week um, or if not every week they tune in from time to time they know we're here on all the shows they know we're here and they know that we're going to be on the airways every every week and and that's that's nice that that recognition is coming about and of course what the 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 other nice thing about it is that um guests are coming to us potential guests riders and people involved in the sport are actually contacting me and said love to be on your show so there's a recognition there that obviously takes time but i think we're getting there glenn when Helena and I started, what? Oh, geez, Helena, what are we at? Episode seventy now, or something like uh, that? Seven thousand, maybe. <laughs> Sorry, my. Oh, All my. right, Helena, we've been doing this for seventy weeks, and you still can't turn off your phone. I, I, you know, I really can't. I, I can't turn on my phone. I can't turn off my phone. I, I'm just useless. <laughs> well, right. we started I think this. I killed it. I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sit Honestly, on it, Helena. I, I really. <laughs> Wait a minute! I've been at this the longest. I know. Seventy episodes. Just when we started this seventy weeks ago, we just thought it was going to be a fun little thing that we did. And then I, I really wanted to do the World Equestrian Game Show, and I guess I did that alone for about forty weeks. And then uh, Samantha graciously came along to help. Um, And it, you know, I really did not imagine that things would go the way they have. And Chris, what you said is that the that these shows and that uh, the hosts. All of us, including the, including your part-time co-hosts, have uh, have really gained a certain amount of respect, and I think that's partly because of the way we respect our 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 guests and and the subjects at hand. What do you guys think about that? Is, do you think that's why? Well, I think it most importantly, Glenn, what we've got here is a totally new medium for many of the people out there that are involved in the sports, or either as a spectator, as a fan, as a participant at whatever level. They've not had this medium before. You know, we've had audio interviews here and there from competitions, but we they haven't had the collective show that we're putting on for the different disciplines and, uh, you know, for all the shows. It's not been there. Um, and, it, and it just gives a new destination, which people are embracing now with new technology. And, we, of course, we have to mention, it, and thanks to Skype, we, this is possible. Without Skype, we wouldn't be able to do these shows the way we do. If people ask if we have fancy studios, no, we're pretty much all in our bedrooms with a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> that makes what makes it, makes it nice. And I think we do approach the interviews with a, with a certain kind of respect that isn't very common in, in media across the board today. Um, we don't have an ulterior motive. Um, you know, we're really just interested in getting to know our guests, getting to know what motivates them, sharing that information. It's it is uniting the horse world. You, you know, um, and and that's interesting, Helena, because I don't think you guys even knew when I I have a mission statement for the Horse Radio Network, and we we've had it really since day one, and that is uniting uniting the horse world one show at a time. And that when Helena and I talked about doing this, we said we want people that are are eventers or dressage people or or Western riders or whatever listening to things uh, or listening about things that they had no interest in before, but after they listen, they go, "Oh, well, that's pretty cool," and that's what we mean by uniting the horse world. And I I, I think. I had somebody come up to me who is going to remain nameless, but let's just say she's a very famous 
dressage person come up <laughs> on Friday night uh, at, down at the event in Florida, and we chatted my ear off for, for, for half an hour. And she said at the end, you're doing something with this radio network that needs to be done in the industry, and that's uniting the horse world, the different disciplines of the horse world, and putting them under one umbrella. And I, and, and nobody else has been able to effectively do that. That made me proud. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but... Absolutely. Well, as I can say, it's a, it's a vehicle that wasn't there before that is a, you know, a uniting vehicle. And, you know, those of us who have been in the horse industry a while know how fragmented the horse industry is. You know, everyone sticks to, the, in, in a, in their, to their silo mentality of their breed or their discipline universally. And I think what we have here is something that can, you know, get our arms around the whole industry. And there are so many things that have, uh, uh, have crossed platform interests, if you will, um, from from tips to personalities for trainers. From there's a whole range of of components that make this uh, this forum, uh, you know, so um, interchangeable. And and I think uh, to your point that I think this is exactly what we're achieving, and it it's exciting to be part of that because as you guys know, I've been in equestrian media for longer than I care to remember, and I've never had this chance to to do this, to embrace the whole of the horse world in this way, and and convey our messages and 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 talk to guests in this way. Normally, uh, for my Part, you know, I'm at an event. I'm covering or, or remotely covering a competition, and you're interviewing people, and you're you have an angle. And as Helene says, we have no angles here. You know, we just want to talk to everybody and tell their story in in a very friendly way. And if I can just add to that, when you ask about what what one of the best shows of uh, my favorite episodes this year, I think on the dressage radio show, I think it would have to be with Isabel. I, yes. you, well, let hmm. me just c- clarify that, Chris. It was also one of the most downloaded shows of the year and mm. most listened to shows of the year. And yeah, definitely. it's interesting. And, you know, I've been interviewing Isabel and watching her compete around the world at major competitions for, for years since she's been competing at this level. And she always gets, she always comes across in a very focused way, very serious. She is, she is very serious and she's very uh, dedicated and very professional when she's at a competition. But there's a softer side to her. And not least of all now, she's a mother. And we talked to her when she was pregnant, towards the end of her pregnancy. And I think it just adds another component to her that people don't see. There is a warmth there. And what I tried to do was bring out the humor and the warmth. And, you know, I hope I achieved that. And and it did, it, it did come across for me professionally as one of the nicest interviews that I've done with any dressage rider and not least of all a German dressage rider and um, right. <laughs> so so yeah if it, it if it achieves that then then I, I did what I set out to do we had uh, Monty on the stable scoop show uh, Lena was out a couple of weeks ago and and uh, Darcy filled in with me and one of the comments that Debbie and we had both Debbie Monty's daughter and Monty on the stable scoop show with us and by the way, Monty was a rock star over the weekend down there in Florida. <laughs> he was just, he just. But well, we should remind people what with the Florida event that Glenn's talking to is the Succeed Wellington Classic Dressage USCT Gala fundraising event, which took place in Wellington, Florida, Friday and Saturday night. And uh, Glenn and Samantha were down there enjoying it on Friday. And then I commandeered Glenn. Yeah, on she the put second. me to work. <laughs> <laughs> she had me run uh, sound on uh, Saturday night. That's right, and uh, it, it was a ter- it was a, a lot of fun, and that was a, speaking to our unifying message, guys. I think that was a unifying event, um, bringing different breeds and disciplines and interests together, much in the way that the principle of WEG was established to do that, to bring the different disciplines together, so people are talking to each other that otherwise wouldn't have a conversation, and that I think was what was achieved. Um, at that gala event, which will be repeated next year. So uh, when you watch Monty Robert go in the arena with Courtney King Dye, and what he did on the Saturday night, Glenn, was hysterical. <laughs> it was. It, was. <laughs> it he was, was hysterical. He was trying to mimic Courtney was doing her dressage thing with her fancy warm blood, <laughs> and there Monty was with his, what, uh, championship uh, reigning quarter horse, about well, we 14 two hands. It was, a, <laughs> it, was a, it was a pas de deux. 
uh, just for those of you who weren't uh, uh, there, to, and uh, if you weren't there, you, you will get a chance to watch this on equestrianlive.com shortly, and it will also be televised on HRTV in February. But just to explain that what Monty and Courtney were doing each night was a pas de deux. So each would do their routine and alternate. Um, and then when towards the end on Saturday night, Monty saw an opportunity to mimic Courtney. So he, he did his routine. Then she came back and did her next piece. And he followed her around the arena. And it was absolutely hysterical. <laughs> Seeing it, him it, try to do his flying lead changes. <laughs> it was so funny and so spontaneous. Um, it was, it, it, you know, and Courtney trying to be serious and, you know, yes. do her passage and PF and, you know. Oh. <laughs> she, she was cracking up by the end of it, though. She, she was, was watching him more than she was paying attention to her riding. She was, the... <laughs> she was looking over her shoulder, absolutely. And we should also point out that if Monty needs a second career, he has one as an auctioneer. Oh, yes, he did a great job. He sold a, a mini for, what, $6,000? $6,000. He told me that. He, Glenn called me from the road and said, you're not going to believe this. Monty <laughs> just somehow auctioned off a mini for $6,000. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> and, you know, when you had the likes of Stefan Peters out there dancing to Templeton Thompson doing a country dance at the end of the show, it just was a great time. It, what I was trying, what I was trying to get to too, is Monty made a comment too to get back to our previous point. He said, "You know, that was one of the most fun interviews I've ever done. We didn't talk about his training methods at all. We just had fun talking." And he said, "You know, that was just one of the most relaxed, fun interviews I've ever done." And he's done a few. We get that a lot from our guests that that they they start out kind of stiff and on guard, and then after the first ten to fifteen minutes, you can you can physically feel them. It's the the change in their um, demeanor is tangible. They they just suddenly relax. They start blah 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 talking about all the things they never thought they were going to talk about, and it really does become a very relaxed conversational tone, and that. I think that makes these people more accessible to the listeners. There's that's the key to uniting everybody is feeling like you know these people like Samantha said, you the more you talk and the more conversational and relaxed everybody is, you really start to connect. And speaking of connecting, one of the one of the groups that we've connected with and been very happy for over the past a uh, year, over a year now, is our sponsors. We've had some tremendous sponsors and support. People have been with us since the beginning and have, have enjoyed being with us and have stuck with us. And we're just going to take a moment now and let one of them speak to you. Happy holidays to all the listeners of the Horse Radio Network from your friends at Kentucky Performance Products. Kentucky Performance Products cares about the health of your horses and knows you do too. May you and your horses and ponies have a very happy and healthy holiday season and a fun equine-filled new year. From all of us at Kentucky Performance Products at kppusa.com. Happy holidays, everybody. Well, we're back, and we appreciate, as we said, all of our sponsors. We appreciate their support. Uh, really, we couldn't continue to do this without them, and, and they've been a big help. There's one show we haven't mentioned yet, though, and I have to bring it up. It's Horse Tip <laughs> Daily. And, you know, you guys know when I started this, I said, I'm going to start this silly little show where we're doing tips every day. And uh, Helena said, well, are you nuts? And um, It's not a silly little show anymore. <laughs> no, it isn't. It's like a – we had uh, in two months, it's, it's grown to over 5,000 listeners. <laughs> and it's like, wow. okay, well, I guess I have to do this silly little show every day now. Uh, it just has turned it – and I think it's because it's eight minutes. I have some really engaging people on the show. There's some really cool experts that have come on the show. And it's different every day. One day we'll be talking about taking pictures pictures of your horses with a world-class photographer and the next day we're talking about uh you know you and lisa talking about how to you know your seat when riding dressage so i think it's so varied every day that's what people have really taken a liking to yes i think you know because it's so short glenn i think yep. that's what people you know it's just a very quick what five ten minutes even yep. What, yep. is five, that, is that minutes. about average yep, yep. And I think that's what appeals to people, that it's, short, it's, quick, the, it's quick and easy. The shortest one was digested. one of Max Cochran's tips. The whole show lasted two and a half minutes. Oh, uh, yes. With me talking and Max doing her tip, it was her tip was 45 seconds, and we were out of there in two and a half minutes. I feel a tagline coming on, yeah. <laughs> which, and it involves two and a half minutes. <laughs> 
I, most of these experts, though, I can't go to, to go. They don't. They can't stop at two and a half minutes. You know, it's just. And we we had. I had last week three new experts come on board, and they were all referrals from previous experts. So isn't that cool? I mean, that sh- that little show has just taken off. So if you haven't listened to it, it's at horsetipdaily.com. I had to just brag a little bit about it. Oh, quite rightly. You know, it was a great idea, and it's funny how it's taken off. And, of course, you're able to harvest tips from all the different shows from our eventing radio Yeah, show thank you very much for that, show. Chris. <laughs> oh, you're welcome. <laughs> Appreciate that. Could, could, could you double the royalties on that? <laughs> okay, yeah, about yeah. The I'll double the Daily zero show. dollars. What would you say, Sam? I said we're bragging about the Horse Tip Daily Show, remember? <laughs> Yeah, but I get half my tips from her. <laughs> I do appreciate that. Well, now Can let's we talk. We sponsor to... our own shows. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> <that right>. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the holidays. Yeah. Um, you know, do, do, does any of you have any ho- horsey memory memories of Christmas or New Year's? I know I'll start here. Uh, my wife uh, was in Pony Club uh, for years and years and years and graduated from Pony Club. When I first met her, she still was actively involved with helping out with the Pony Clubs. And one of the things they did for many, many years, we were in Carlisle, Pennsylvania. And Carlisle, Pennsylvania is the home to the Army War College. And it's where all of the officers train for how to do war. And they all, most Army officers go through there at one point or another. Well, every year, they would have they would get together with the 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 barracks there still had horses and some of the old colonels and stuff still rode so some of the old cavalry guys at that time still rode and they would get the pony club would get together with the cavalry guys and they would they would do Christmas carols throughout the housing part of the Army War College. And the people there just loved that. They would come out on the porches and they would clap. It just was that thing that they looked forward to every year. So there'd be 40 or 50 riders singing Christmas carols for for an hour or two. And many times that I went along, it was snowing. Um, They would do it in the snow or or whatever and, and would do it every year. And it was very popular. It was just one of those special things you remember. And that particular thing involved horses. Anybody else? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember asking for a pony for Christmas for like 30 years. Not getting one. <laughs> My daughter thinks Santa's bringing a pony, but she's going to be sadly disappointed. Oh, no. No <laughs> pony for the daughter this year. And I do remember the Christmas Eve and Boxing Day meet to hunting with all the ponies decorated with tinsel. And um, that's always a fun meet. So Everyone. did you guys hunt at Christmas? Christmas Eve or Boxing Day, but not not Christmas Day. Okay. Now, what was but what's Boxing Day for those of us in the, uh, in America? Boxing Day is the day after Christmas. Okay. How did I get Why the name Boxing Day? Um, because it's another day off, and you get to <laughs> sit around and digest and have a hangover, and I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> watch the horse, watch the jump racing on television, and go hunting or go to the meet, or I don't know. It's just, All right, we'll take it. We'll take it. it. It's just, uh, it's just it sort of lengthens the holiday out a little bit more. And we, we, you know, we've talked about on the shows, on all the shows, really before about how in England, when you grow up in Pony Club, you really hunt. Also, that's that's something that really goes hand in hand, doesn't it, Chris? Oh, absolutely, yes. Yeah, Boxing Day hunts are as much about the social side of. Um, of, of, of fox hunting as anything you know everybody gets a glass of pot and a mince pie and it, it it's a, it's a really big family affair for people that you know are, um, with their families for the holiday season they'll come out to the boxing day meet as part of a tradition and lots and lots of pony clubbers out that day too so yeah, I think it's a big deal to put tinsel in the mane when you when you plait your horse's mane. Put tinsel in and tails, and um, on your hat you put. You know, I think it's it's sweet. They're all decorated. And I actually took. We were at home for England in England one year, and we went to one of the meets. And um, the kids, you, the kids can play with the hounds before they all move off. And everyone's saying Happy Christmas and having drinks like Chris said and sausages and. It was it was just nice. I miss, I miss it. <laughs> and but they're long days. You meet at eleven, and you you'll hunt till it's dark, and then you have to try and find where you parked or remember where you parked. And I remember always being freezing cold and getting very tired by the end. Where you parked, was... Sam? Where you parked? What about those of us who never had any transportation and had to hack all the way home, cold and wet, Alina and exhausted knows that story. and lost <laughs> and dark and. Not all of us had the luxury of being trailered. Uh, and, and, but, you know, that was part of the fun, too. 
Yeah, yeah Helena has had that, pro- had that <laughs> fox hunting, haven't you? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hi, sweaty, too. Don't forget sweaty. So you're hunting for God knows how long, and then you get nice and sweaty, and it's 25 degrees, and and you and your horse are shivering the whole way home in the dark. Yeah, and then I also remember riding horrible young horses to people, and they jig jog the whole way home. Oh, that would drive me crazy. Worst. That's the worst. So your arms are tired. Your seat's <clears throat> tired. And all you want to do is... God, yank it in the mouth and <laughs> swear at it. <laughs> Get off, kick it, walk home. <laughs> exactly. Leave it. <laughs> I, did, I have one holiday memory that I was not hunting this time, but um, there was a fellow, it was a joint meet, and there was a fellow who was very jolly, and he had to be, he, he was a large fellow, and he'd had more than his share of port. And um, they had come to a, a stone, a bridge over a small creek, and there were stone walls on either side. And the poor fella had ridden his horse into a lather, and they stopped at a check, and he had just, he was laughing, and he was totally drunk off of his butt, and he leaned to one side, and his horse was so sweaty that his, his saddle and his girth, everything just kind of slid with him, and he, he just dumped himself on the, on the ground. And I said, oh, gosh. I said, are you okay? Are you okay? And he, he just sort of laid there in the brambles and said, I'm all right. I just need a minute. <laughs> and he laid there. And I thought, oh, my goodness, is this really what hunting is all about? And and it took about five people to help this man get back in the saddle. But bless his horse, this, this tiny little thoroughbred mare, he got back on her and she took him home. And when when people say, you know, I've seen horses as designated drivers, this man couldn't do a thing. He just got on his mare and she said, right then, off we go, <laughs> back home. And And Aww. she took him right home. She took him right home, and um, I thought, well, that's a holiday memory for him, if he can remember anything. <laughs> <laughs> probably, probably not. This is a joint show of five five different shows, really. The Horse Tip Daily. We have Stable Scoop represented here by Helena B. We have Chris representing dressage and eventing, and Samantha representing the whole entire world equestrian games. Woohoo! <laughs> so, uh, Guys, this has been fun. Let's talk a little bit about what you have planned for your for our individual shows uh, for for next year for 2010. Obviously, 2010 is going to be. We'll start with Samantha because, really, 2010 is all about the World Equestrian Games. You know, can you tell us a little bit about what what we have planned? Yep, we have. We'll be getting regular updates from our spotlight riders as they ramp up their preparations and their selection trials. And we have the test events for dressage, show jumping and eventing coming up at Rolex. We um, There will be the selection trials and the qualifiers. And then, of course, 2010 World Games, September 25th. We'll be uh, recording every day from the t- 2010 World Equestrian Games. And Sam, don't forget to don't forget to uh, uh, mention again that we'll be on the road getting free food and drink uh, for the whole next year. Um, free food and to... drink. We'll be on the road getting free <laughs> food and drink. <laughs> just wanted to bring that up. It's going to be a lot of fun. We'll be doing more with the chatting with the champions, past champions from the World Question Games as well along the hey, way. Uh, can I switch shows? <laughs> <laughs> you can come and join us whenever you like, Helena. Okay, sweet. <laughs> and uh, Chris, for you got two of them. What, what, what's planned? Uh, what do you th- see down the road for eventing and dressage? Well, I think we'll be getting um, different guest co-hosts along the way. Um, obviously, the focus, it is a championship year, as you all well know, um, with the World Equestrian Games. So a lot of our focus in the three Olympic disciplines will be on WEG um, for those that uh, obviously are, are heading in that direction. Um, but, you know, when you, you have to remember that it's just only four or five people on any of those teams that actually go. And there's a whole world out there beyond the uh, team riders. Um, and, and those are the people that we will cater to as well from uh, every level of, of the sports. And, and we look to build on that, really. And, you know, to have more and more interesting guests from right across the country, right across the world, which we've we really enjoyed doing. You know, so we're catering to our audiences internationally. And uh, and that's that's been a lot of fun. So you can look out for uh, more guest co-hosts joining me on the shows. And uh, a lot of interesting topics and new segments. We'll be introducing new segments, too, along the way. Uh, as we get a lot of uh, responses from our listeners, um, you know, and questions and too, and they sort of provoke ideas um, that, you know, we should explore. So um, the shows will all continue to grow. Um, I mean, that's, I think, part of our mission here to, as as we've said earlier, is to 
reach out and embrace and unite the whole of the horse world. And uh, while our show's a specialist, we are blessed that a lot of our listeners actually listen to s- several of the shows, don't they, Glenn? Yeah, that's the response that's been amazing throughout this year. And we're hearing from more and more listeners, and you can email us anytime. But is the number of listeners who say they listen to all the shows and want more. Um, and, and I... You know, I write back to them and say, I think that personally, that's way too much me you, you listen to. But um, they do. They, they listen to all the shows. And, he, and we'll get them to say, well, I'm, I'm an inventor and I'm listening to Dressage or I'm listening to the World of Equestrian Games. And, you know, we get people on the Stable Scoop show that are Western that are listening to the English shows. And, and that's, just, that's just cool stuff. That's just really and, neat stuff. And I also um, want to be doing more of those quiz shows, which were so much fun. And we've already... Because I get to get out the uh, bells and whistles. <laughs> you do. <laughs> and you love that part, being the sound effects guy, don't yeah, you? Yeah, I do, I do. You know, <laughs> and Chris, I wanted to strongly encourage you to keep doing tips every week because I do like stealing them. So uh, yeah. keep that up, all right? <laughs> don't, don't drop that off on me. All right, I won't do that. I'll prevent, <laughs> provide you with plenty of fodder. Uh, but yeah, the, the tips, uh, sorry, the... Um, quizzes that we're going to be doing already are going to involve some rematches and we've got some new contestants that want to take on the reigning champions so there's going to be more of that on the eventing radio show and we're also going to transfer that to the concept to the dressage radio show down the line there so look for that over the winter you know it's a quieter time for all of our disciplines of course over the winter and so we'll be building up these new segments and as always we love to hear from you and really really want to know what you want uh, because we'll We'll listen, and we'll obviously do what we can to to deliver. Um, but I want to take this opportunity, Glenn, to personally thank my guest co-hosts that have helped me along the way here this year. Yes. On the on the dressage radio show, that's of course uh, Reese Koffler joined us for a while after Heather Blitz was our first guest co-host, and then um, more recently Debbie McDonald and Lisa Wilcox. So a big thank you to them. They're a great uh, bunch of girls, and they've uh, had a blast doing it too. And on the eventing radio show, we've had um, Jenny Brannigan and Boyd Martin. My buddy Boyd. And and they've both really enjoyed it. And just this week, um, this week on, on the show, or I should say last week, <coughs> would be Max Corcoran. She did a Max- great job. She really enjoys She has a great radio voice. Yes, she does. And, and of course, knows her subject very well. So Max is going to be joining us more. So we'll look out for she's the groom for Karen O'Connor. So, yeah. Correct. And those of you who listen to the Eventing Radio Show will know that Max has been a guest on, uh, in fact, two of our quizzes. And she's all ready for a rematch, Glenn. She and Karen um, are going to be taking on... Uh, uh, Jan Binney and uh, Lizzie Williams, they're all ready to, to take them on. Well, good. Of course, Boyd wants a rematch, too. Yeah, Boyd yeah. Think it was stolen. Boyd, it, yeah, Boyd would think it was stolen. He thinks I pretty much cheated <laughs> given doing the scores. Boyd's never going to talk to me again, I think, pretty much. Well, you know his new nickname now, what I call him. I call him Taffy. Well, yes, uh, yes, and you have to listen to that show to understand that. <laughs> And Helena, you know, this all started with you. And uh, I'm going to, so we'll, so we'll end the wrap up here with you. We got some fun stuff planned for Stable Scoop for the next year. That's all we do. Fun, fun, fun. <laughs> <laughs> we had a really good show last week. Uh, I wanted to mention it again. We had Rupert Isaacson on, who is the father of the horse boy. The, he wrote the book and the movie. And, and uh, it was just so I could have talked to him for six hours. That was great. That was a great interview. He's a fascinating person. And his, his and Rowan's story is, is fascinating and touching. Well, you know, we have some, as usual with Stable Scoop, we're going to round out the uh, the horse world. We're going to cover a little bit of everything, we, 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 and we did this past year. But next week, we're, we're having on uh, somebody who is uh, from uh, Horse South Magazine, and Tess is her name, and she is doing the top 50 most influential women in our magazine in the horse world. And she's covered the top 10 this year, and she's going to review with us the top 10, and we're going to go over those with her. We thought that would be a good year-end episode and what's interesting is several of them have been on the stable scoop show so of course they have yeah so that's cool well everybody well, we... i need to i need to i need to tease one thing glenn before yeah. we wrap up here because we're going to have a really special show on the eventing radio show next week we have got three legends in the sport coming on for a legends round table and those of you who have been following the sport at any length of time will know 
um, that these guys are really it. That's Mark Todd, Lucinda Green, and Ian Stark. All three of them are joining me in conversation for a Legends Roundtable, so you won't want to miss that. Well, that's great. Yes. Even I know who they are. <laughs> that's awesome. See rock stars everywhere. The that's... horse world is so full of heroes. I, I have to say that it's. I think it's a nice thing that we're, we're getting to know um, these heroes from all facets of the horse world. It was interesting I... that you say that because the listeners that came up to us over the weekend at that event uh, Chris said the same thing that that you can read an article, you can read an interview, but until you hear them, you don't understand their passion and their you know you don't, you hear their inflections and you really get to know them as people. And that was the thing that impressed the one listener the most is that I'm getting to know them as people. And I don't think you can do that in an article. I, I just don't think you can. You you have to hear the voice. No, yeah. it's all it's all about the voice. If you can't see them, at least hear them. Well, this has been great. We want to thank our all of us. Want to thank our listeners for all the shows. You're what makes this possible. There are tens of thousands of you now around the world. Uh, you know, when Helene and I started, we were talking to ourselves. It was, <laughs> you know, I think the first three episodes we hit ten listeners, and we were thrilled oh that there were God, ten I people know. listening to us, <laughs> and and we kept trudging on, and then it became twenty and fifty and a thousand, and now it's the tens of thousands. So, I do remember you calling me and you said we had 12 downloads this I know. week. <laughs> I know. We were thrilled. <laughs> we were so excited about that. <laughs> We Again, we thank all of our affiliates for carrying the shows. We have so many good affiliates now. And we want to mention, if you have a website out there and you have a horsey website, you can carry our shows. Uh, affiliation is free. Just contact us and we'll get you hooked up. People can listen to our shows right on your website. We'd love that. And we want to wish everybody the happiest of holidays. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year to everybody. Enjoy. Be safe. Enjoy your horses on on, uh, on Christmas Day. Go out there. Give them a carry. Give them a hug, give them a kiss, uh, and, you know, give them the day off. And this uh, would not be complete, Glenn, without us thanking you, Glenn the Geek, for all the work that you put in behind the scenes to make this show here. possible. Absolutely. Thank you, Glenn. Well, no problem. It's fun for me. This is, this is a labor of love here. As I said, you know, we're not doing this for the money, so uh, we do it because <laughs> we want to help, and we want – and I – and I truly believe in the mission statement. I think Helene has probably known me the longest of any of you, and I think she knows that that I believe in that mission statement, and uh, I truly do. Absolutely. We love you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Helena. <laughs> well, a big, a big uh, um, Christmas, uh, Christmas holiday wish from, from me to all our faithful listeners, because we really do appreciate your loyal support. It, it makes all the difference to know that you're out there and you're enjoying what we're doing. So my very best wishes to everybody, to all of our hosts and all of our listeners, and uh, continue to listen because we will continue to grow. And on yes. the count of three, everybody, happy holidays. One, two, three. Happy, happy holidays. holidays.